Now, if we're talking about properties which are inherited in a soil, these are ones which are based primarily upon the type of parent material from which that soil has formed. By parent material, we're talking about this, this partially weathered or unconsolidated mass of, of rock and mineral matter, and in many cases, as development takes place, the, the organic material as well. So those are referred to any properties that are related specifically to the parent material from which the soil has formed are referred to as inherited properties. What types of properties are we talking about in a soil that are considered to be inherited? Well, one, probably the best example of that would be the overall mineralogy and or texture of the soil. By mineralogy, we mean what are the types of primary minerals, what are the types of secondary minerals, and at what rate has this weathering and development occurred? Those, that basic mineralogy is a good inherited property or a good example of an inherited property of the soil. Also, the type of parent material is very instrumental in determining the textural class of the soil. Generally speaking, granites, those types of, of rock formations, will weather into coarser textured soils, and basaltic types of materials will, will weather into uh, finer textured soils that are typically, or would typically have a higher clay content when, than would be, the coarse, be typical of the coarser soils. Now, if we talk about the acquired properties of a soil. These are the ones that are, that develop in a soil based upon the soil forming processes or factors over time. The major thing that determines the acquired properties of the soil would be the climatic situation or the climatic climate under which that soil has formed. So most specifically the amount of moisture that's available and the uh, length of time in which that soil has weathered or developed. So if we're looking at the acquired properties of the soil, those would be things which we've already mentioned, such as the type and number of horizons in the soil profile, what amount of distinction there exists between the beginning of one and the ending of another horizon, the one above it, uh, and what amount of depth have these horizons developed uh, or have horizons developed into over time. So acquired properties are really based upon the climatic influence the type of climate under which the soil is formed, whereas the inherited properties are based pretty much upon the parent material from which that soil has formed. Which of these two do we most often use to recognize soils and classify soils with? Well, I think you can see from our previous discussion of, of soil horizons and soil profiles that we do use the acquired properties. It's very difficult, if not impossible, for us to look at a soil and determine its mineralogy we can get an indication of texture, but we really don't know the texture or textural class for sure until we run some sort of analysis on it. But in the field, we can clearly observe when looking at a soil profile, an exposed section of the soil, the type and number of horizons and the degree of, of distinction between those horizons. So it is indeed the acquired properties that we utilize to determine and classify the soils.